Hey guys, so I'm back with the second part of my roster review. This is the last time we talked a little bit about the mains I used to have and am currently using, and also a little bit about my current classes that I enjoy, like Soul Fist. So we are still left with my Deadeye, my Soul Eater, and my Artist in terms of my six gold earners. And I wanted to go over those three classes today. Now, since then, my last video was titled 5,600 plus hours. Well, that's still true, but we're actually at the next level, next point, 5,700 hours now since the last making of that video. So join me as I talk through some of these classes. So to kick things off, I want to start off with the most recent class that came out in Lost Ark, which is also currently my favorite class to play, and that's Knight's Edge Soul Eater. I've made quite a few videos on this class because I feel like there's so much to explore and there's also a lot of nuance in playing this class well. So if you haven't checked out any of those videos yet, I'll link one of them at the top of the screen right now. Now this class is so much fun and has everything that I like in a class. It's flashy, it's mobile, and also one of the strongest classes in the game right now. I'd say it's probably the weaker of the two compared to Full Moon Harvester Soul Eater, which is absolutely insane at the moment and will be nerfed in the upcoming balance patch but it's still plenty strong. What I like about the class is that it's not a face roll class whatsoever. It's a class that rewards good play because while many of the skills have super armors, there's a lot of the skills that you need to land in order to make your rotation smooth that don't have super armors. So if you play sloppily or badly and miss your meter generator skills, your damage will drop significantly. There's also a bit of kind of the skill shot element to guillotine as well that comes down that delayed. So if you miss that, that's a lot of your damage gone as well. But if you're able to play the class well, you'll feel extremely strong. The only con that I can really think about for Knight's Edge Soul Eater really revolves around the soul snatch mode that you enter once your meter's full. It's a bit clunky at times because you can't fully control when you enter it. The moment your meter is full, boom, you immediately transition into soul snatch mode. Additionally, when you're in that mode, you actually do less damage than if you are out of it, which is very backwards if you think about it. Looking at every class in Lost Ark, this is the only class where you do less damage when you transition into your identity mode. Classes like Igniter Sorceress, Demonic Shadow Hunter, heck, even Full Moon Harvester Soul Eater. They all do more damage when you transition into your identity. Knight's Edge is the only exception to this rule, and it's definitely kind of weird. But overall, this class is an absolute beast and extremely fun to play. I'd say it's not the most beginner-friendly class, but when you learn how to play it, it's extremely strong and rewarding. The next class that I want to cover in this video is my Pistolier Deadeye. I've talked about this class in length in the past on my Deadeye video, but I think this class is a very solid class. While it's not the strongest class out there, it's an extremely flexible playstyle that has a lot of depth to its mastery. While being a ranged hitmaster class, you can hit the boss from any angle and still do full damage, which allows you to pick your positioning very well and always attack from an area you know will be advantageous to you. Additionally, Desperado is, in my opinion, the most fun skill to use in the game. That skill on its own convinced me and probably many other people to make a Pistolier Deadeye in the first place. Now, while I don't dislike this part of the class, many people see this as being a con of the class, and that has to do with how straightforward the class is to play. Like I said earlier, this class does have a lot of depth to its mastery, but in order to play the class well, I don't think it takes a lot of time or effort to do so. Once you learn the basics of the class and are able to execute on those basics well, I'd say you're probably already at 70 to 80% of the class's strength. The rest of that 20 to 30% really comes down to the mastery of those nuances. Whereas a more complicated class like, again, Knight's Edge Soul Eater, you're probably about 50 to 60% power at the most once you master the basics. There's a lot more nuance to it that requires a lot of practice to make the class extremely strong. Additionally, this class, the Pistolier Deadeye, doesn't really have a rotation. You can really use whatever skill that fits the situation, and a lot of people think this is a bit boring, and there's a lack of depth to it. But for me, I actually really like this flexibility, and is why I made the class. 
but many others find this a little bit too straightforward. Overall though, I would say that you should definitely make this class if you're looking for a fun and flashy class that's very flexible and will do well in any situation you put it into. Now, the next class on my roster is my artist. And this class has a bit of an interesting story. If you didn't see in the previous video, I used to play a bard as my main, and I ended up dropping it because that class, unlike DPS classes, even though you upgrade your gear, you don't really see the impact of those upgrades. The time and money you spent on holding the class just doesn't really reflect in your gameplay or the results. Because of this, I ended up dropping the class. But eventually, I made another support, which is the artist. While the class still suffers from the same drawbacks of the other supports that I mentioned, I was drawn to the aesthetics of the class. I love the whole ink and brush aesthetic of the class, and in my opinion, it's a lot more fun to play artist compared to the bard. It feels like there's always something you can be doing and need to be doing at every point in the game, and as a result, to me, it feels a lot more active of a support compared to the bard. You're also a bit more mobile than the bard because you have Hopper. While Artist is my favorite support class, I think it is one of the harder supports to play as well. Sunwell, the attack buff, well, one of the attack buffs, has a very small AoE, which makes it very hard and awkward to use well. If you place it in an awkward position, a lot of times your DPS may not be able to get to that attack buff. Additionally, if the boss moves just an inch, sometimes it can cause your melee DPS to not be able to take advantage of that buff. You're also the squishiest support, even more so than the bard. So survivability is a bit more of an issue compared to the other supports. Lastly, your damage reduction skill, Starry Knight, it's a bit awkward to use, unlike the other two supports. It's an AoE around you instead of a targeted AoE on the ground. It's also not very commonly used in our version of the game because it doesn't generate much meter and you would most of the time rather run other skills over it. After the balance patch though, it's much better to use because Illusion Door actually gives reliable shields and you yourself get the damage reduction and shield from Starry Night, but it still remains fairly situational. Overall, I think that the artist is a very unique and fun support. If you didn't like Bard and Paladin, but want to play support, I'd recommend trying out the artist because it does have a very unique playstyle and in my opinion is much more active than those two other supports. Now, this is the last class in my roster, and that's my Reaper. And if you're counting, this is the seventh class, and you can only have six gold earners, right? Well, the reason for this is because this class is a bit in limbo, much like my Glaber. Some weeks I put my Reaper as a gold earner, some weeks I put my Glaber as my gold earner. It just kind of depends on what I feel like playing, because both classes are probably on the bottom of my list for my classes that I like to play. I currently play Lunar Reaper, but when I first made this class, when it came out in the West, I actually played Hunger. This class is a bit of a troubled past in my roster. When it first came out, I was extremely excited about the class. I knew the class was a bit weak at the time and was touted to be the most gate-kept class in Korea, but I really wanted to play the class because it looked a lot of fun. But also, I didn't know the extent to how weak it actually was and how badly gate kept that class would end up being. Reaper ended up being so badly gate kept that I couldn't even play it in pugs because nobody would let me into their parties. It wasn't even because my resume was bad either. I'd bought the accessories way before the class came out so I had really high quality on my accessories. I was also 5x3 and I also had level 7 gems and LOS 18 at the time, which was pretty good. Not many people had LOS 30 at the time. But still, I would get gate kept from every single pug party, pretty much. And because nobody let me into the parties, all I could do was play with friends. It was just that bad. Additionally, I felt like I would play the class out of my mind sometimes, and still end up doing very little damage. For the longest time, I called this class the Upright God because, for the most part, that's all I would ever get, Upright Fighter. I then proceeded to drop the class for a while and eventually decided to pick it back up and turn it into a Lunar Reaper. I played the class for a bit as a Lunar Reaper, 
but at the end of the day, it still felt extremely weak for the amount of effort that I put in. I felt like if I really wanted to push the class to its maximum potential, I really need to put in the funding of a main, and I didn't want to do that. So after a few weeks, I dropped it again. Now recently, with the news of the upcoming buff to Reapers, I decided to pick the class up again. While it still feels a bit weak, it has been through a couple of rounds of buffs already and does respectable damage. That being said, we'll still have to see if I end up keeping it in my roster after the upcoming buff. At the moment and in the future, Hunger will be the stronger of the two specs and also probably the more comfortable one to play. And it also brings more in terms of stagger and destruction to the party. So if someone were to ask me which spec to play, I would tell them to play Hunger Reaper 100% of the time. So that about wraps things up. Those are the classes that were either at one point in one of my mains or are still on my six gold earners roster. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the videos. If you did, please let me know in the comment section down below. Additionally, there are still quite a few classes that are in my roster that I don't play anymore for one reason or another. And if you want to hear about those classes and why I ended up dropping them, let me know in the down in the comment section as well. I'd love to make a video on that if there's enough interest. But yeah, as always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit the sub button, ring the bell for notifications. And as always, I stream every night starting from 10 p.m. PST on twitch.tv slash misosu. I've seen a couple more of you guys show up there and we're starting to build a really good community in Twitch. So please, I'd love to see more of you guys there and join the fun. And as always, thanks for watching this video. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out.